All right, if you remember uh, back a few months ago, I replaced the leaf springs in this truck. It's my 2001 F350. So I'm driving it the other day, and I noticed that my steering wheel, um, I had to really hold it to the right or else it would, or sorry, to the left, or else it would dive, you know, to the right. And then uh, when I stepped on the brakes, I'd have to jerk the wheel back over. Uh, I thought it was something something else entirely, but when I jacked up the front end i couldn't I couldn't spin this tire at all it was it was seized on there so what it ended up being is a caliper um, the, these were seized they're all the way they're out you know squeezing on the cal or on the rotor and they were they were seized in there I had to actually pry that thing off pound it off uh, ended up taking the bracket off first to you know because it slid off the rotor a little easier. And then when the when the brake pads fell through, um, that all popped off. So I just went up to Advanced Auto and grabbed these new ones. It was fairly cheap. It was under $100 for everything that you see here. And uh, the the clips and stuff for the old pads. See those old pads? Yeah, they're all, they're all burned up too because they got nice and hot. I'm surprised that this isn't warped, but it's not. I don't feel any vibration in the wheel at all. But I just kind of want to give you a little step-by-step -step of how I go about replacing the uh, caliper. So the first thing you got to do is, of course, take everything apart. And then what I like to do is take a pair of vice grips and just pinch this hose. Not super tight, but just enough to collapse the hose and no fluid comes out. So I'll have brake fluid all the way down to here and I won't have any right there. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to fill up my caliper by taking off the bleed screw. Uh, taking a little funnel and filling that with um, with brake fluid. Now, since these are all the way compressed, it's not going to take a lot of brake fluid. And then I'll just leave it sit for a while, and you know the bubbles will you know pop up through if there are, are any. And then I'll just kind of top it off. Then I'll install this, and what I'll do is um, release the the uh, pliers, the vice grips, and let the fluid start. To run out that banjo fitting and as it's doing that I know all the air is out of there and then I'll quick hook it back up and that way I don't even think I'll need to even bleed these but we're gonna go ahead and do that first and then I'll uh, I'll let you know if we got to do some bleeding afterwards so stand by all right, I'm gonna put the bracket on first it's nice and sticky these are the old bolts. I have some anti-seas on them. Uh, I think that does a lot better on being able to get these back out in the future. And they don't they don't loosen up over time uh, like you'd think with the uh, anti-seas they would, but they just don't. So I'll go ahead and put that on there. Alright. Now that those are in, I can go ahead and get the new pads on here. Okay. Yep. What I like to do now is uh, put a couple of lug nuts on here just to keep the road or just to keep the cap. Sorry, keep the rotor where it needs to be because it wants to flop around a little bit, and that makes lining up the pads a little more difficult. So just tighten these up a little bit, just to kind of bring that. Make sure we don't have contact, and then I gotta go and lube down in here and in here where the brackets go that hold on the pads so I'm gonna go get that stuff and I'll be right back I just put these on I didn't turn the camera on in time but these just kinda clip in they really only go in one way because with this the spring loaded deal here you gotta slide the pad in through there and if it's on backwards you're gonna make you know it just won't work so you you'll kind of see they only kind of go on one way and that's that now there some of them have this little uh, spring that goes between these two pads here to, to kind of keep them pressured out but this kit doesn't come with them, so I guess it just doesn't need it on here. 
And uh, but anyways, that's it. So now I'm going to go ahead and start prepping this caliper. I was going to take the bleed screw out, but I don't. I'm not going to. I'm just going to take. Can you see me here? No, you can't. I'm just going to take this fill plug out here, and I'll uh, I'll put some fluid in here. So that'll take me a minute. So I'll be right back. All right, what I did was I just stuck a small funnel inside of the um, inside of the hole in the caliper, and um, it's got a good seal. It's not leaking out, and you can just see a little bubble after bubble coming up through there. I'm just going to let that go ahead and drain into here, and all that air should be out. And I have the uh, the hole at the very very top. So once I pull out this funnel and just clean off the fluid, I will be topped off completely and I'll go ahead and put the little rubber plug in it um, while I install it and it'll still be at the top and then I'll go ahead and put the line on so let me just let this uh, bubble for a little while and get some of that fluid and we'll go from there alright now that caliper is all bled out uh, I'm go ahead and install it now put the plug back in it so not losing any fluid and no more bubbles are coming out so this can go on. All right, so that's good. And, uh, moving nicely on the slides very good so now I'm going to go ahead and hook this line up first I want to clean that off and get the two uh, copper washers that came with this assembly and get them ready to go so let me get back to you in a second so look what came in the bag with the caliper uh, not with the shoes or with the pads so I'm gonna go and take this bolt out here and move this down and put these on but actually I'll just show you so let me get ready with the top bolt out I should just be able to move this down like this without losing any fluid because I got the caps still in there and then these go in like this it's gonna wanna it's gonna wanna pull these pads out so I like to close this door a little bit on it and then it actually holds it Thought that those uh, springs came when you bought new pads, but apparently it comes when you buy what did I buy? New caliper. There. Yeah. See, there's a flat spot on the side of this thing here, and if you don't get it lined up right, that bolt won't tighten up. Or if it does tighten up, you just got it cross-threaded, and then you're screwed. So. Just make sure that's in there right. Everything should just kind of go together real nice and easy. And if it doesn't, you're doing something wrong. That doesn't need to be freaking alter, alter tight or else you break it. So, all right, let's go ahead and get that cleaned off. I'll be back. Well, I had to run back to the parts store because uh, when I returned, my caliper is a core. Even though all this stuff came with, with everything I needed, it didn't come with a with a new banjo bolt. So I had to go back up there and grab my old one. Okay, so what we're gonna do is put a washer there, put a washer there. This is gonna go on like this. I'll put a bolt through, and let me get a rag. So when I release this, we're going to start getting fluid, and I'll just let it run for a minute, and then we'll uh, pop it on. Yeah. Now that's running through nicely. Put that on.
just kind of looking around it. I could feel that the, uh, the brass washer squished a little bit as I tightened it, and that's good. And now I'm just kind of looking around to see if I can see any leaks. So far I don't. I need a flashlight. No leaks. So, um, if I do gotta bleed it, the bleeder screw is right back here. Uh, I will uh, take the truck for a test drive and if I feel the front end moving around one way or another or the brake pedal soft, then I might need to bleed this. But I think I got all the air out. I filled up this caliper. I actually went to the, uh, the two pistons and was squeezing it with my hands and getting more bubbles out and I kept squeezing, squeezing, squeezing until it stopped. So there's no more air left inside here. And then you saw what I did as soon as I pulled the wrench off and got a nice flow of fluid coming through the hose, I put that on. So, and I had plenty of fluid in the, in the uh, reservoir. So this line is nice and full and the caliper is nice and full. It should be ready to go. So the last thing to do now is to go take it for a test drive. I'm just going to go throw the wheel back on it and I will let you know how it runs. Okay, here we are on the other side. Uh, I'm, I bought a set of pads for this thing, so I'm obviously going to change them on both sides because you don't want mismatched pads. Um, even though these ones are really almost new, uh, they're a different. They're the cheaper versions of the ones that I bought over there, so they're going to wear differently. So I have them. I'm going to go ahead and change them. Uh, I did take it for a test drive before I took this wheel off, and yes, I almost did leave those lug nuts on the other side, but I caught them in time. But I took it for a test drive and it was perfect. There's no vibration. There's no, uh, it doesn't pull to either side. It, it stopped perfectly. So I'm good to go. I'm just gonna go ahead and change these pads out real quick and then uh, call this job done. Thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, subscribe, and have a wonderful day.